So now we have this expression for the estimator of beta 1, and it's equal to this expression. This is the expression we've been working with for the past few videos. And you can see that we can express this expression over here as some constant x1 minus the sample mean of x divided by, I'm just going to use s double x to represent the denominator to save myself some time, times y1 plus some constant times y2 all the way to the n, xn minus sample mean of x, so again some constant times yn. And an expression with such a structure is what we call a linear combination of y. So you have constants times the y terms, and then you're adding them up uh, together. And this is what we call a linear combination of the y terms. And what I want to show you in, the, in this video is that uh, this estimator that we have over here, beta 1 hat, this is what we call a best linear unbiased estimator. So it's called an uh, estimator because this thing is an estimator. It's unbiased because previously I showed you that this estimator has an expected value of beta 1, so it's unbiased. It's linear because I just showed you this estimator is a linear combination of y terms, and it's called best because of all possible linear combinations of y terms which you can use as uh, estimators for beta 1. This particular estimator over here has the lowest variance. So you can have other linear combinations of y terms which would result in an unbiased estimator for beta 1, but they will always have a higher variance than beta 1 hat itself. So when you're considering an estimator, of course you want to have low variance because that would give you more consistent results. So what I want you to show you in this video is that this estimator here is the best estimator. And that is essentially what the Gauss-Markov theorem is trying to tell us. And that this expression over here, best linear unbiased estimator, is commonly abbreviated as blue, so this might be easier to memorize. And so that, now let's, in this video, I'm going to show you why this estimator is called the best. Now, in order to prove my claim, I'm going to first consider an arbitrary uh, linear unbiased estimator for beta 1. So I'm going to call this estimator beta 1 hat star and it is going to be equal to c1 times y1, where c is a constant, plus c2 times y2, all the way to cn times yn. And so you can see that this estimator here is a linear estimator, and I'm also going to assume that this estimator is also unbiased. And of course I can express this expression here as uh, using the summation sign. So I'm not going to write the subscripts and superscripts just to save myself some time. And since I'm assuming that this estimator here is unbiased, that means the expected value of this estimator is going to be equal to beta 1 itself. And the expected value of this estimator is going to be equal to the sum of ci times the expected value of yi. And the expected value of yi, that's just equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi. And so you can see that I can break these brackets apart and I can pull the beta naught to the outside. So you can see that we have beta naught times the sum of all the ci terms plus beta 1 times the sum of ci times xi. And we know that this expression over here is equal to beta 1. So if you compare the coefficients, you can see that this term over here must be equal to 0. And so that means the sum of all the ci terms must be equal to 0 because beta, this is for a general case, beta naught doesn't have to be equal to 0. So if in order for this expression to hold for all cases, the sum of all the ci terms must be equal to 0. And then you can compare the coefficients, you will see that the sum of ci times xi must be equal to 1. And so this is a preliminary result that would come in handy later on. And now I'm going to define a new term called di, and di is going to be equal to ci minus xi minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x. So you can see that this term over here is just equal to the constants attached in front of all the y terms for our beta 1 hat. So uh, di, the difference between ci and the constants that we already have, is uh, equal to di. So this is just a new term that I'm defining. And uh, I'm going to introduce a shorthand for this term as well. I'm just going to call this gi. So you can see that ci, uh, di is equal to ci minus gi. And so that means ci is equal to di plus gi. 
And then now with these terms uh, defined, I'm going to consider the variance of beta 1 hat star. So the variance of this term, this is just equal to the variance of this sum of y terms. And I'm going to use the result uh, we used in the last video to evaluate variances uh, that look like this. This is just equal to the sum of ci squared times the variance of yi. And the variance of all the y terms, they're all just equal to sigma squared. So this whole term here is just equal to sigma squared times the sum of all the ci squared terms. And ci squared is just equal to di plus gi. So I'm just going to substitute that in. And then we square this. So you see that sigma squared is just equal to the sum of di squared plus gi squared plus 2 di gi. And so you can see that the variance of beta 1 hat star is composed of three components. It's composed of sigma squared times the sum of all the di, ter di squared terms plus the sum of all the gi squared terms plus 2 times the sum of all the di terms times the gi terms. So now I'm going to focus on these two expressions. First of all, I want to evaluate this expression. I want to express this in terms of all the x terms. So let's now focus on this gi squared term. Now the sum of all the gi squares, remember gi is just equal to this expression over here. So gi squared is just equal to xi minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x squared. And of course I can pull the s double x to the outside, don't forget to square this. And then we have the sum of all the xi minus the sample mean of x squ uh, squared terms. And this expression here, this is just equal to s double x. So now we have 1 over s double x. So this is what gi squared is equal to. This is equal to 1 over s double x. And then now I'm going to focus on this term. So now I'm going to focus on the sum of all the gi terms times di. So now instead of using di, I'm going to switch back. I'm going to express di as ci minus gi. So now I have ci minus gi. And so you can see that this expression is equal to the sum of ci gi minus the sum of all the gi square terms. And incidentally, we just evaluated this. This is just equal to 1 over s double x. Let's get rid of this. So now, so now we have the sum of all the ci times gi terms minus 1 over s double x. Now in order to evaluate this term over here, I'm going to write gi out explicitly as xi minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x. And then I'm going to pull the 1 over s double x to the outside. And inside the bracket, you can see that we have something like this. So we have the sum of ci times xi minus the sum of ci times the sample mean of x. And then 1 minus s double x. And then of course I can pull the sample mean of x outside of the summation sign. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to put the sample mean of x over to the outside. And now I'm going to use the preliminary result we derived earlier. So the sum of all the ci terms must be equal to 0. And the sum of x ci times xi terms must be equal to 1. So this is a constraint that we obtained because this estimator over here must be unbiased. So we, now we can use these two constraints now. And you can see that this term over here must be equal to 0. And this term over here must be equal to 1. So now for this entire expression, this is just equal to 1 divided by s double x minus 1 divided by s double x. So this is just equal to 0. So now you can see that going back to this expression, this term here is just equal to 0. And so now what that implies for our variance of beta 1 hat, uh, beta 1 hat star is that now our variance is equal to sigma squared times uh, we have this 1 over s double x square plus this term over here, the sum of all these di square terms. And if you put the sigma square inside the bracket, you'll see that first of all you have this expression plus sigma square times the sum of all the di square terms. And if you take a look at this expression over here, if you recall the result from our previous video, you can see that this is actually just the variance of our beta 1 hat. And then this term over here, this is a term that is always larger than zero. All these are squared terms. So that's why this entire expression over here, which is the variance 
of beta 1 hat star. This is always larger than or equal to the variance of beta 1 hat. And so there we have it. This is the result that we're trying to obtain. So now what this means is that no matter what kind of alternative estimator that you, that you can come up with that is linear and unbiased, it will always have a variance that is higher than the variance of our beta 1 hat. And so that is why we can call a beta 1 hat the best estimator because it will have necessarily have the lowest estimator amongst uh, other linear and unbiased estimators. And so this is the essence of uh, Gauss-Markov theorem.